Hello, welcome back to another video and this is another clip that I saw online about a guy trying to do his front crawl and uh, he's looking to get some feedback and uh, I'm going to take a look at this footage for the first time and I'm going to give you my assessment and uh, probably some things that you probably can't see to the untrained eye. So let's take a look and see how he does it. Yeah. Pretty good. So, first thing I noticed, okay, so compared to the the previous guy that I made a video on, you can see that this guy is wearing the proper swim attire. So he's wearing the swim cap, he's wearing goggles, and he's wearing jammers. I told you guys, you bring uh, the right gear to the right sport and yeah you're one step ahead of most people he doesn't have to worry about his gear now second thing are his legs okay so like i said when we do front crawl we work backwards and uh, the first thing we work on in front crawl are the legs so his flutter kick actually looks pretty good you can see a little bit of a uh, splashing on the surface of the water so the, the best way you can tell a, a good consistent flutter kick is by looking at the color of the water. When the water turns white, that means his feet are on the surface of the water. Okay, if, it's, if you don't see any white water, that's a bad sign. So you can see some white water. And his feet, the speed that he's kicking is really, really comfortable. You can see it's not like this. Like a lot of people do this like hummingbird kicks or giant spanking kicks but he's got a flutter kick which looks great in my opinion so uh, yeah he, he's worked on his uh, front kicking for quite a while I can tell his uh, upper body torso is the next thing I look at so when he's you know when he's swimming yeah, it looks fine like you can see that his butt is a little bit out of the water which is a good sign so it's not sinking like 45 degrees it's 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 on the surface of the water so that's another good check check now here is where we start noticing things okay so the upper body is usually the final part of the equation that needs to be fixed and it may take several months so the first thing I, I noticed was his breathing pattern now for you you can see that he's doing one arm two arm and then a breathe and he's only breathing on his left side so in the long run if you continue this pattern of two arms for every breath breathing only onto one side which is his left side you're gonna start developing bad habits when we're doing front crawl we stick to odd numbers so not one but three or five arms per breath and usually the average is Three. The reason why we do odd numbers is because we want to balance our breathing, our turning, onto both sides. So we don't develop that imbalance. So usually uh, when swimmers start their set off, we, you know, we're fresh and our body's ready to tackle the water. So five to seven arms is usually pretty, pretty doable, right? Once you're, you're approaching like 15 to I don't know, like 25, 30 laps in, you start developing a pad, a, a normal, comfortable breathing pattern. And that number is usually three. So three arms for every one breath. So it's gonna look like one, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe on the other side. So I breathe on my left and my right, and I just alternate. But also, 
if you do two arms per every breath, you're, you're really stunting your breathing pattern. So think of it like this. When I take a breath and I'm doing three arms, I'm breathing like this. Ooh, ooh, right? I, I breathe. It's like, it's like making three notes. Ooh, ooh. All right? Now, if you do only two arms, it's going to be ooh, 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 ooh. Do you, do you see how anxious I feel when I'm doing that? Just, you know, really just trimming it down to just two arms for every breath. So the only time that we do like two arms or one arm per breath is when we're near the finish line. Okay, so we're, not, we're on our final lap and we're trying to win the race with the competition that he needs to work on is his catch. Now, if you don't know what a catch is when it comes to front call, a catch is basically how your hand, your arm enters the water, okay? I don't like that word, that terminology, catch. That doesn't make sense to me when it comes to swimming. I like to call it slice, okay? Because that's what you're doing. You're slicing your arm into the water, okay? Slicing it into the water. You notice that he's, this is the water, and he's doing this to the water. He's spanking the water and then pulling. Spanking and then pulling. But what we want to do is slice the water and then pull. Slice and pull. Why? Because we don't want any friction when we enter the water. And I know a little bit of a spanking doesn't hurt anyone, but when you're doing thousands and thousands of arms over hundreds and hundreds of laps, this resistance is going to build up over time. So I like to think of uh, my arm as like one giant needle. And I like to think of the water as like uh, a piece of cloth, okay? So if you take a needle and you just spank the cloth, it's not gonna insert well into any of the fabric. But if you insert the needle at an angle and you weave it in like this, then you have a better chance, right? Stitching it in. So what I do is I, I like to stitch my arm into the water, okay? Gracefully. So there's no resistance whatsoever doing this. And then you can pull what's, whatever way you like. All right, there's so many ways of pulling, but we'll get into that in another video. So, again, the water is a piece of cloth. Your hand is one giant needle, and you just, you just cut into the cloth, sew, and then you pull. All right? And uh, once you make this little refinement, your swimming will, will feel like effortless in no time. The final piece of advice that I like to give this guy is his head position. Now you can't see it, probably you probably can't see this, but I can. His head is unusually out of the water, okay? The way I can tell is because I can see the top of his head. When you're swimming, you should, your head should be straight aligned with your body. That means the top of your head should be facing the water, just like the nose of an airplane okay flying in the sky the nose of an airplane is the top of your head and I can see his top I can see the top of his head clearly so that means that his neck is cranked a little bit up just so that he can see forwards towards him and that's a common newbie mistake okay because we want to see what's in front of us all the time especially when we're swimming we don't know what we're swimming towards but the so if I were to take his head position and face you Okay, this is what he looks like. All right, the top of his head is facing this way. All right, not towards you guys. So he can see the water in front of him as he's swimming. And this takes a toll on your neck and your body over time, okay, being in this position. Because just imagine like the head of an airplane is flying like this, forwards like this. Okay, it's not comfortable. We want our heads tucked in like this. So instead, we want, you can see the top of my head now, 
and my nose is facing down, which is where it should be, and occasionally I look forwards. Okay? So in this position, my neck is relaxed. Okay? I let the water do all the work. I let the water lift or hold my head towards the surface of the water. So breaststroke, we have the luxury of looking forwards a lot more frequently. But in front call, we don't. We look down. So usually when we're doing front call, we're looking at the bottom of the pool. And usually there are lines at the bottom of the pool that are indicators so you can see where you're going. All right, so we swim. One, two, three, breathe. Back down, one, two, three, back down. And occasionally I check forwards, see where I'm at. And that's your front crawl. Okay, so to recap this guy's swimming, uh, three, three things that I recommend he work on are one, he starts implementing three or five arms per breath. Okay, so that he can balance turning to both sides. Second is that he work on his catch. Don't spank the water and pull. Slice into the water like a needle and a thread and then pull. Okay, it's a lot more graceful and reduces the friction caused. Okay, and third is to push his head or lower his head down and just let the water hold his head up towards the surface of the water. Okay, top of his head facing forwards, he's looking down, nose is down, and then occasionally check forwards by just rolling your eyes up the top of your head. So that's it. That's all I have to say about this video. If you have any more feedback about for this guy, please leave in the comments down below. If you want feedback on your swimming, join our private Facebook group. The links are down below. And uh, yeah, I wish this guy the best of luck. So that's all I have to say for now. My name is Justin. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.